Hi guys, Tom here from Six Foot Networks. This is kind of going to be an off-the-cuff uh, video, more so just a remark video than uh, an actual technology overview. Recently, there have been some requests for me to do a video on using Apple Remote Desktop across the internet. Now, it's an easy enough video to do. However, as I was preparing for it and trying to get, you know, my thoughts into a form that I could present, I came across several hurdles that sort of stopped me in my tracks. Now, as you can see, I'm driving and I really felt the need to have this conversation um, just as if I would if you guys were sitting right here with me. So what's Apple Remote Desktop? Well, I made a video on Apple Remote Desktop a while ago that basically went through the process of installing it and sort of using it right out of the box. But there is some functionality to it that makes it one of those products that you could use it across the internet just as it is. Now, what does that mean? Well, Apple Remote Desktop is just as the name implies. It's a tool that allows you to log into a machine and graphically control it from A to Z. Essentially, you go in and double click on a computer and the screen pops up on whatever computer you're using. Um, and that's it. You can control it, you can use it as if you were sitting right in front of it. So that's Apple Remote Desktop in a nutshell. But the idea kind of evolved that, well, although Apple Remote Desktop is great for when you're you know, say working for a corporation that has several hundred Macs or Linux computers, because you, you wouldn't use Apple Remote Desktop for a PC, uh, for a Microsoft-based uh, computer. Uh, you would just use Microsoft Remote Desktop for that. But for Linux and Macs, you can easily use Apple Remote Desktop. But what, you know, what happens when you're in, in the middle of a pandemic, right? Say, <laughs> work from home, quarantine, what have you, and you need to have a more flexible means of getting to the machines that are on your network in your office, or vice versa. If you're in your office and you want to access your machines at home, you know, for whatever reason, you know, I mean, the second, the, the, the second idea doesn't really make sense when it comes to the pandemic, but you, you get what I'm saying. You understand that it's a tool that allows you to remote control a computer. But what's stopping you from doing it across the internet? Well, in reality, nothing. But here's the reason why I, on behalf of Six Foot Networks, cannot make this video. And I'm sure others have done it. I haven't looked, but I'm sure it's there. And I'm also sure that there's plenty of how-to documents in the wide world of the internet right so with that said here's the reason why I'm not going to be part of that that crew essentially to make these videos Apple remote desktop is a utility that allows remote control of computers now that by itself right there kind of sparks some form of security concerns at least in my mind it does well what does that mean well in order to effectively control an app, or control a system through an app, I should say, you need to poke holes into your firewall. So effectively, you need to either do some kind of a one-to-one -one NAT, or port forwarding of some kind, or some kind of network address translation that allows the router to forward any traffic that's coming from the internet to the machine in question, right? Now here's the downside. 
using ARD across the internet, as far as I know, and, and I haven't really tested this much, but as far as I know, ARD would only be a single client model. So in other words, you could port forward a single port, and or a single IP, I should say, and that would be your the host that you could remote control across the internet. Maybe that works. Uh, to me, it's not practical, but I've always been the kind of guy that thinks security first, usability second, and then the likes and would likes last. I would never use Apple Remote Desktop across the internet, ever. <laughs> not unless I'm doing it through a VPN. Uh, every client and every customer of ours, we set up a VPN tunnel to their environment. Uh, if it's a site-to-site, -site, great. It gives us the flexibility to just be con connected all the time. If it's a client or agent-based connection, okay, we can work with that. But you really have to sit down and think about it. Now, I've had some time to think about it since I've been in this car. And originally, I was going to do this whole video on how-to and, oh, God, the ports you need to, to open up. And then I thought to myself, why am I about to make a video about giving instructions to somebody? Now, anybody watches these videos. It could be, you know, no offense, mom, but it could be my mom. And although I doubt she's gonna start poking holes in her firewall, kudos if she does, but essentially the, the point comes down to anybody can watch these videos and anybody can take a tutorial or a page out of a book or, or something that I say and use it in a manner really other than directed. Now, that right there was enough to kind of stop me in my tracks and then I thought about like how can I do a video about this and just not mention those details like could I do an obscure video like the whole security by obscurity concept and be very vague about it yeah I guess I could but guess what that wouldn't do you guys any good and I've still felt the need that I owed you guys at least an explanation as to why you should not do this. You really shouldn't. And if you're considering doing it, then God bless you and good luck because opening any port on your firewall to the internet, you know, whatever it is, TCP, UDP, whatever it is, is dangerous especially if you're not sure what you're doing or if you're not well versed in the product that you're using or the firewall that you're using you can easily make a mistake I personally don't trust consumer level products and I believe that to be the you know the going way amongst the engineers I work with even some of my guys they probably share in that same opinion. I don't speak for them. They have their own minds and their own opinions. But I myself believe that doing so can really put you in a risk situation that you really don't want to be in. The other way you can look at this is, you know, people don't necessarily think of security first unless you're trained in it or you've been exposed to it or you work for a facility or organization that is really top notch when it comes to security and protection. But if you think it that way, then you have to really understand that it's just not worth the risk. There's nothing that can be said or done that will essentially help you should you get breached perfect example of that and maybe it's not 100 percent same situation but look at places like target or sony or 
um, you know, all these other companies that pretty much get hacked and ransacked every day for whatever reason. Now, most of those, if not all of them, were social engineering. But this is even worse because you're just opening the front door of your network, be it home or business, to the entire planet. You don't know who's out there sniffing your IP address at this very moment. And if you think about it, any of these ports or any other holes that you may have opened for port forwarding could just be a welcome mat for those who love to, you know, poke around with intrusions, you know, viruses, spyware, ransomware, God, everything. Everything under the golden sun that you can think of could easily be brought into your network through an open, you know, firewall port. So, forgive the speech, I apologize, but I felt that you guys deserve to at least hear me spill my brain on why I don't believe that using Apple Remote Desktop or for any remote desktop product, whether it's Microsoft or VNC or whatever you can think of, you know, the remote desktop tools. If you're gonna go across the internet, use SSH. Use some kind of a secure shell to control your machines. Might be difficult on Windows unless you're familiar with uh, that platform of remote management. Can't say that I am, I've never done it. I'm a, I'm a Linux and Mac guy myself, going all the way back. But just think about it, you know? Don't take my word for it by any means. However, all to all of you guys who have sent me emails or have posted in the other Apple remote desktop video that I'll, that I'll link to this video, you know, the only thing I can say is I'm sorry, but you know, it's for really your own good. And if you do choose to go forward, implement some kind of logging. That's the only advice I can give you is implement some kind of logging and some kind of technology that allows you to monitor what's coming and going on those ports. And if you really want to harden your network a little bit more, disable the ports on your port forwarding when you're not using them. You know, don't leave them open just because it's convenient. Um, yeah. I think that's pretty much it, and uh, I think this video is long enough, and I've kind of, maybe I've beaten a dead horse, but from from me to you, if you're still watching this, first of all, I appreciate you, and thank you very much for supporting the channel, supporting us, our company, and we hope you can understand that this matter is final and that we will not be releasing the original video that we were going to do about connecting and using Apple Remote Desktop through the internet. Have a good evening and thank you for watching.